All right, 648 now, and cardiologist uh, Dr. Alex Harrison joining us now, talking about heart health. And uh, our topic this morning prompted by an email from a viewer who was interested to know just how doctors like you figure out what's wrong with our hearts. Yeah, Bob emailed in asking, essentially, how do doctors and cardiologists determine cardiovascular health and disease? And really, cardiovascular health and disease is a very broad topic, but uh, the heart works just like a pump does. It has the muscles of the heart that squeeze and uh, pump blood to the body, and so you can have actual problems with the pumping muscle. Uh, it has valves that keep the blood flowing in the right direction, and it's regulated by uh, an electrical system that coordinates all of these actions. And so you can have problems anywhere down the line. Um, one of the mainstays of the electrical system analysis is an EKG, which measures the electrical activity of the heart. Uh, an and ultrasound. The, the graphic that we're seeing here, is this describing what you were saying, how this electrical system works? This is actually an ultrasound of the heart. Oh, uh, okay. An echocardiogram uh, is another mainstay, and that looks at the valvular function, the heart muscle pumping function, and uh, can give a, a significant insight as to uh, the state of, of the heart and its, and its status. Uh, but there's a variety of tools. And then lastly, the, the pump receives its fuel supply, if you will, from the coronary arteries, which supply oxygen uh, through blood flow to the mm -hmm. heart muscle. And those can be assessed for blockages and problems with stress tests of various kinds. And the next graphic uh, shows a treadmill stress test. There, we're told that it's coming. There, there we, we go. go. Uh, so this is a gentleman walking on a treadmill. Uh, the EKG is being monitored for changes. You look for symptoms suggestive of any uh, blocked arteries, and then you can couple that with either imaging such as ultrasound or uh, myocardial perfusion imaging with uh, nuclear isotopes that, that go to the heart and can be picked up with various cameras and so forth. So there's a whole wide range of diagnostic tools available to um, doctors and cardiologists, um, but oftentimes it starts just with the basic vital signs, just measuring blood pressure and heart rate, and if your heart rate's excessively fast or slow, that can be a, a clue that something's going on. Yeah. And are there any ways that you can uh, check these things yourself? You know, we see the guy running on the treadmill. Are there things that we can be looking for as we're exercising that we would feel differently or, or check our, you know, a lot of times when you're doing aerobic activity, you can check your own pulse to see if you're getting your heart rate going. Uh, oftentimes if you have a a rapid, irregular pulse, that can be a sign that there might be uh, something going on. And this was some, something we could notice ourselves. Yeah, a lot of people feel an irregular pulse, some don't, mm -hmm. but if you were to feel your pulse and notice that it's irregular, that could be a sign that there's something uh, potentially going on that might need further evaluation. Um, other times, if you feel uneasy or dizzy or lightheaded and you feel your pulse and it's excessively fast in a time when you aren't exercising, that could be a concerning mm -hmm. sign that, that also you might need to be uh, evaluated and so forth. If you're of a certain age, you know how you get certain tests when you hit right. 40, when you hit 50. Are these things that you would get tested for, you know, when you're you reach heard 50? a certain or, land yeah. hit a milestone? Not necessarily. I mean, it, it, it's definitely important, like we talked you know, several months ago about being aware of the silent risk factors and silent killers of cardiac disease, the blood pressure, diabetes, and cholesterol, and so forth. Uh, EKGs are generally routinely done when you get to your middle age, just so you have a baseline to compare it to for future analysis. But routine stress tests are not recommended uh, at this point in time, unless you're in a high-risk group, either a strong family history or you have a lot of risk factors and so forth. So if they're not recommended, does that mean they're not covered? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> not without uh, generally some indication, symptom right. or, or, you know, like I said, strong risk yeah. factors, but just general screening, it's no, it's, it's not recommended or covered. All right. Well, if you have this uh, topic today came from a question from you, so if you would like to have one of uh, your questions covered the same way, you can send an email, morningrounds at kcoy.com, and uh, we go through every single one of them. That's and, right. You know, pick out the one that uh, we feel covers the most uh, number of people out there.